G'day! In today's video, I'm having a look at an ASUS VivoBook Flip 14 with the model number TP412U. This one's running a Intel i5-8250U. We'll have a look over to here. There's our model number. And it's got 8GB of RAM and a 256GB SSD. Also, if we have a look there, we see some more details. An exact model number along here. Anyway, the reason why I'm cracking this one open is it currently doesn't want to power up, so I'm just opening it up to inspect to see if the power jack on it's still all right. But I, while I'm there, I'm gonna go over what potential upgrades you could do to this model. So as we can see, we're already missing two screws, one and two. And I'm curious to see whether or not these screws, how many of them are the same size. So far, so good. And the screws at the front are a smaller variety. As you can see. So once we've got those out, Move them off to the side. And next up, you're wanting a little pry tool. Uh, pry from the front corner. There you go. Now I use my little pizza cutter tool. Go. So we're now inside, and what do we have here? So at a quick glance, we have one upgradable Wi-Fi card. Let me spin that around so I can read it. There we go. Hopefully you guys can read that too. We have a Intel model G265NGW. So that'd be Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Two antenna connections. While we're here, might as well have a quick look at the battery. So we have a 42 watt hour battery. Model number over here. So all fairly user upgradable. I suspect under here we're going to see some RAM. So I'll just use the same pry tool as before. Actually, I'll use a pair of tweezers. That should get me in there. I'm just going to go in the gap here and pull up. There we go. This is a good example of soldered and sodium. So when people say 8 gig of RAM soldered on, you can see it right here. Four individual chips, all 2 gig in variety, to produce a total of 8. And then we have a single sodium of DDR4 over here to also upgrade. So installing the RAM in there is pretty straightforward. Let's demonstrate that now. So some may say you have to disconnect the battery, but as long as you know the machine's off, you should be fine. RAM goes in at about a 45 degree angle, then to simply push down. From there, you don't have to configure anything, just simply turn the machine on, and it should detect the other stick of RAM that you've added. Then to remove it, these two latches, Pull one out, like that. Go over here, pull that one out too. And from there, we are removable. So very straightforward as well. So we'll put that cover back on once more. Just line it up with the tab metal tabs that are there, and then push down. There we go. Looking over. They have the video connector here, and we have the power jack right here, which my original intent was to open it up to see if this was damaged. And I don't believe it is, it's pretty solid. So if you do ac accidentally damage your power jack on your laptop, on this particular model, the board would have to be taken out, and then a new one, so this one, removed and a new one soldered in. 
go over here. Under here would be the CPU. So uh, I think that 80, the 8250 or 80, yeah, 8250i5, I'm pretty sure that is a 15 watt chip. So as you can see, there is very little cooling for it. So this would also be used in the integrated Intel graphics. And going over here, we have the M.2 NVMe. So with that, we have a single Phillips head screw here. Which, if we undo that, from there, so this would be what you'd need to do for a RAM upgrade. From there you can lift up and, oh, we're revealing what we are. X600 SSD, a SanDisk X600, 128 gig. Radio. So the installation of that, facing upright. We just need to wiggle it into the groove that's down here, which I tilt this up. You'll see the groove along here. That will slide in. We'll wiggle in like so. Put the little sleeve back on there. I don't believe that sleeve's really necessary, but whatever, put it back. And then a single Phillips head screw back. Now, the keyboard itself is replaceable, but is a rather large job. If you never need to replace the keyboard in this particular model, you'll have to fully remove everything out of here and the keyboard itself is stuck down from the top so you have to undo all the little plastic welds on this metal shield definitely not a pleasant job to do at all lastly which i probably should have covered first is the battery itself so the battery connector here we should be able to pull this forward so this little, little bit of silver needs to slide forward like that and then we should be able to get a fingernail under here and here and pull up. So if we go like this, we are one battery disconnected. So very straightforward to reinstall, locate it back to where it should go, push it down slightly, and then push that silver bit back towards you. And with that, pretty much right to finish up another thing while you've got it open i'd definitely recommend doing especially with these flipping lap the the full 360 fold laptops is just re-torque the screws on your hinges so these ones here and here are, they're basically getting a quarter of a turn go over to these two here this one here i can tell is going to have a fair bit of turnage to it so On top now. So getting about a quarter to two, one third of a turn in. And definitely loose hinges are definitely gonna cause problems. It's always best to torque them down. And then from there, once you've opened it up and either cleaned the dust, well actually, I'll quickly show you the fan. Fan is held down by three screws. Very straightforward to remove and replace. I'm purely going to do this to check the dust. Uh, we're attached to the cooler, I see. There we go. A bit of dust going on there. Not much on the cooler itself down the bottom. Flick that out of there. Yeah, that's a very minute amount of dust, so I don't think it's really going to change anything at all. These three screws back in. So yeah, once you've potentially changed the fan, change, clean the dust out of it, upgraded your SSD, replaced your battery, upgraded your Wi-Fi card, or added more RAM, once you've done that, from there it's pretty straightforward. Put the back cover back on push it down all around so it clicks into position. And remember to put the four shorter screws at the front and the six larger screws at the back. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.